Hi, Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide, and in this video we're going to look at how to configure username and password authentication uh, on the Mosquito Broker. Now, using username and password authentication provides an easy way of restricting access to a broker. It's an easy way of stopping your broker being used by anyone and everyone, and it's similar to what you find on email servers that require SMDP authentication, which was introduced to stop spam on, on email. Username and password combination is transmitted in clear text, which means it's not totally secure without some form of transport encryption, i.e. Uh, SSL. Uh, you should also note the username can also be used for restricting access to uh, topics, and that's covered in an article on the, on the site, and I'll put a link in, in the uh, video notes. Now, to configure the Mosquito Broker, you'll need to create a password file and then you'll need to edit the mosquito.conf file or whatever configuration file you're using to force password use. Now, the password use is forced on the broker, it's not done on the client. The client has to comply with what the broker uh, says. So, to create a password file, you, you need to use the Mosquito password utility that comes with the client tools when you install the Mosquito Broker and I'm going to show you that on Windows and on, on Linux. Now there are two ways of creating the password file. We're going to cover both ways of doing it but if you don't want to create your own password file there is actually a password file uh, as part of the client tools. It's called pwfile.example and that password file has three users called Roger, Subclient and PubClient and all three users have a password of password so if you don't want to create your own password file you can use that for for testing. So method one creating a password file we use any text editor um, notepad and all you need to do is create the user and the password followed by a colon. I've, this might, mine's called p2.txt and I've got Steve colon password Jim colon top secret top secret is the password now then I have to convert this into a password file and I do that using the mosquito underscore password utility with a minus u switch and the name of the password file and if I go and look at the p2.txt later on you see this is the same file as this file here but now it's been converted to a proper password file and you can see the password now is actually encrypted there. So that's the the first way of doing it. Now the second way of doing it, we use the same utility mosquito underscore password with the minus C switch which creates the password file and the minus B switch which basically appends to the password file. So we create it using the minus C switch, the name of the password file, a user and you can see that example here. There it is there. This is done on a, on a Linux machine. So minus C, the password file is p1.txt and the user is called Steve. Then it prompts you for a password and a confirmation of a password. Then if I look further down and I just cut it to actually see what's in there, you can see there's the username and there's the password. Now to append to that file, I use the minus B option. So pass, mosquito underscore password minus B, name of the password file. This time I'm adding user John with a password of secret and I don't get prompted to confirm the password if I if I then print out the password again using the cat command you can see the user John has been added here okay let me show you that and I'm going to do this one this time on. I'm going to do this on on the Windows machine so here I am on my Windows machine you, I'm in the MOS directory which is where I put all my mosquito files and you can see the password utility here and this is the one I'm going to, going to use I've already got some password configuration files here and password files in there, but uh, I'll show you those later. Those are the ones I did earlier and we'll be using those later on. So let's show you how to create the password file. So I go to a DOS prompt and I just type in mosquito password. Okay, so I'm going to use the minus C switch and we're going to create a password file called p1.txt and the user called Steve and just hit return on it prompts me for the password and I'm going to use password and it prompts me to confirm it and then I'm done. Now if I just go and have a look at it this time we're using type and that's what it looks like. Now let's append to it we do the same thing here just go back and I'll change the C to a B 
and I'll change Steve to John and her password is secret and let's go back and type it again and there you can see I've got added the user John so quite easy to create the password file using the the tools provided in the in the install now we need to edit the mosquito.conf file and we only need to put two entries in here one is the allow anonymous to false which basically tells it to use the password file and then we have to tell it where the password file is and I'll show you this configuration both on Windows and on, on Linux now in the examples I won't be using the mosquito.conf file this is used in production environments uh, for testing I'm going to be using my own configuration files and the one I'll be using here is called password.conf which is my configuration file for testing passwords okay so here's my configuration file on Windows alone anonymous false and the password file is there the password file is called passwords.txt that's the one I'm using and I've put the the full path to that file there now to use it all I do is go to a DOS prompt and type in mosquito minus C to use the configuration file and the path of the configuration file and there it is running now let's stop it I could have also used the minus V switch on there to see a bit more information okay so that's running it on on Windows stop it again and let's show you on Linux now on Linux um, the configuration file the mosquito.conf file which is here is usually located in the etc mosquito directory and if you edit this file then you need to have root privileges and I find that a bit of a pain when I'm testing is going back and forth switching to root privileges to edit this file so I tend not to use that one I use a configuration file in my my home directory instead of the this configuration file this is going to be used in production so if when you move it over and you start using it in real life then you'd use this file here so I'm going to show you to, how to edit it the one in your your home directory so here's my home directory and I've just created I've copied the file over there password dot, dot text that's my contains my passwords and the password dot config is my configuration file the one I'm going to use and if I just have a quick look at it you can see it's more or less identical to what I showed you with Windows hello anonymous false this time the full path to the the file which is in my home directory so it's under a directory called Moz just very similar to the Windows configuration so to use it I just go to a, a command prompt and I cha I'm changing into the Moz directory and I just run it mosquito minus C password.conf to run that file and it's running on Linux but not on Windows if you modify the password file you can tell the mosquito broker to reload that file without having um, to restart it so I'm going to show you how to do that so to do it you you need to find out the processor ID of the mosquito broker and you can see I've actually done it earlier here I'm going to do it again and repeat it because it's obviously going to have a different processor ID because I've restarted it so you use the PSA PS minus a command to list all the processes you find the mosquito one which is there and then you use the kill minus hop uh, switch to or signal with the processor ID to force the reload and if I show you back there you can see I've done it and you can see that it actually reloaded a configuration loaded from there but let's do it again and just to show you so I do PS minus A and find the mosquito broker and you can see it's got a processor ID of 3941 so I send it the signal and if I go back to the other DOS prompt sorry the other command prompt you can see it reloaded the configuration file here and this is just a slide showing you what I've just covered here about um, 
reloading the uh, password file the password file when if you've made any changes okay now we just need to test the configuration and to test the configuration I'm going to use the mosquito pub a utility again which comes with the client tools I've got it running on my Linux server so I'm just going to point it to the Linux server minus u for the username which is Steve it's, now this I'm going to test it with a, a valid user and an invalid user now minus big P a capital P for the password uh, a small p is for the port number uh, a topic and a message and that's what I'm going to use at the DOS prompt so let's go to the DOS prompt and you can see I've done it here and the first one minus use Steve password and sorry uh, you can see I, I used the small p there and gave me an invalid message so then when I change it to the big p it worked you can see there and then I tried it with an invalid user here Steve one you can see the connection was refused a, a reminder with that that there is another there's a, a minus debug which you can use which gives you more information you can see it here it sends a connection got a, and received a connection acknowledge and then it was refused so it's a very useful switch when you use the mosquito uh, publish tool if I go and have a look at the Linux server and see what we saw on that and you can see new connection and username Steve and new connection and you can see it here it's been refusing it that was with the invalid username okay uh, just to finish off if you go over to the site there is a written tutorial on the site um, and there's the URL at the bottom and in that one I use some Python scripts for testing rather than the mosquito pub utility and at the bottom you'll find some useful links to other mosquito broker configuration tutorials which are on the site that's the end of the video if you've got any comments on the video then use the comment form below if you liked it then use the like button below and if you want to know when I publish more videos then you can always subscribe to the channel okay until next time bye